Hello, and welcome to the Rough Mix Podcast, episode 11. Today, we've got myself, Trunks. We've got Eli on the left or right, wherever my screen is at. And then we got Jordan below me. And then we've got Vic, too, diagonally to my left or right, wherever you are. He, he's right here. Vic, touch my hand. Come on. Ah, we're there somewhere. You're we fucking almost- up the board, fool. My bad. I, I was on the. I was on the. My, is that the Neve? That's a Neve, right? That's a Neve board. Damn, the shortcuts weren't letting me unmute it. Now this is my SSL nine thousand. Oh, is that your personal one? This is my SSL nine thousand right here. Oh shit, that's cute. Looks like it says SAE on there. That's all right. Um, so uh, today's episode is about some of our favorite sessions that we've had, either you know at school, at our house here, and um. In the Bay Area, uh, uh, somewhere in the West, Greater West Coast area. Sorry, or East Coast area. <laughs> no, it's fine. We we won't tell you where we live. There you go, Eli. All right, but today we're doing the face cam. Hopefully, this works. I hope it actually screen caps our video. But shout out to the Bay. Shout out to the Bay. Shout out to the Bay. Seven five seven. You know, like you're muted. We didn't hear you, but it's good. Oh, I don't know. I wasn't trying to say anything. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Anyways, we're going to start off with some of our favorite session stories that we've had. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let Vic start because he was so eager to do this podcast. I'll let Vic start. Go ahead, Vic. Damn, my shortcuts are fucking up. All right. So I'm just going to talk about um, like a few sessions. All right. I'll, I'll talk about... I'll talk about two bad ones and then we can come back to like two good ones after. So I'll start off. I'm not going to drop any names or anything. So I once had a session with someone and uh, this particular person like (laughs) decided (laughs) this particular person decided to like do a ton of Molly before this person came to record. <laughs> and so like they pulled up and like, this is, I just got injured. So I'm like, I'm like already kind of like, like just bothered. I'm like, I'm going to do this out of the kindness of my heart. So I'm, I'm doing this session. And then this person is like, I'll totally on one. And like, they're like, yo, I got to listen to some music to warm me up. So I'm sitting there listening to some sorry ass music. And this person is just like dancing on the corner and like it was so awkward. And then finally, like Jordan comes in because we all left yes. Jordan came in the session. He kind of like mellowed it down a little bit. And then like everything was cool. And then I was like, okay, like we're gonna be good. So then like two hours passed by, and then like we finally start recording. And then we're recording, and then she like she just starts getting like hella mad, like because she's messing up. And she's like, fuck it, like I'm just gonna do it off like off the dome. I'm just gonna freestyle it. So I'm like, all right, like, all right, like, sounds good. And she's doing it and she's doing it and then she cuts out. And she's like, ah. like, I'll go to the bathroom. So she goes to the bathroom and she comes back with like my roommate's stuff from the bathroom. And then I'm just like, yo, like, that's my roommates. You can't like just take stuff from me. And then this person got all like sensitive and everything was okay. They uh, did some other foul shit and then. Like the song finally came, finally came together and it wasn't so bad. It actually, the song wasn't bad. And this person is not a bad person, but like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, um, we're going to have those artists that are like the homies that like, we're okay with stuff like this. But then like, at the end of the day, like our job is to record our artist or an artist and then record it. And we just bring the best out of their song and send it right back to them. Like, it's not our jobs to be babysitting people, especially if I was doing it for free. I mean, by now, we all charge a decent amount. We've all worked at places, like, you know, like, just that fact, I just, it's like, it's like a respect thing. It's like, you got to have respect, especially for the engineer, because like, you know, we're doing a lot. We all do, all of us in here do a lot for our sessions. Like a lot of engineers in general, they go out the way for a lot of things to bring out the best of a song. And like, the last thing that I do is like, piss off the engineer and make a fool out of yourself in this person's house that you're invited to 
that's just like a no go. There's no hate. Don't hate the person. They make good music, but it's just, you know, right now I don't have the time for that stuff. And no one really sh- will. Any professional studio like that, you act like that, you will not, they won't let you. I've seen it. We've seen it. It's just, just how it is. I mean, honestly, Vic, to be to be quite frank with you, that's how it goes. That's how it just happens sometimes. You know, unfortunately, there are those people who, uh, you know, I, I know who you're talking about. And she was touching my stuff. That's all I'm going to say. And it was bad. But for for me, I think my my I have a, I have a session. I don't have any I don't have any bad sessions at all. Like now, I don't think I have one bad session. Really? All of them have been pretty good. Are there some? Is there something you're thinking about? I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of one, but it was more bad. I think for like the planning when we had that session with this one artist who was a mutual friend of one of my friends. Who we recorded at school. Uh, I think I know you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, well, not, it's, not it's not bad, though. All my, all my sisters have been pretty good, though. I think my, my the, the best session I've had is, I think, the one where I got, like, the most energy out of, a, out of a, like, a, a session, which is crazy that this song was actually supposed to be, like, supposedly on this Project 96 thing that we were talking about. And that, has, that we mentioned in the last episode. It's like, so it was my beat. And I played in the studio. At first, there was like three people in there. They're like, "Oh, like I didn't I, like they they just heard like the the beginning melody," and they're like, "Oh, this is nice, you know, it's smooth, real like relaxed." And then like the drums hit, and everybody's like, "Oh, okay." And then they started like some people started like it's like an old like West Coast boom bap beat for those who didn't haven't heard it heard it. Um, and and then like I don't know where the door was the door was open, so like people around the the halls it was at our school, so people around the halls like heard it. It's a banger. And, yeah, at this point in time, there was like maybe like twenty people at our school for the whole Project Ninety Six thing, like just walking around different studios and trying to like if they hear a beat, they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna go inside and like try to rap on it, you know, try to get on the song." Um, so the door was open and like the beat was up, like loud, so everybody just like heard the beat and they just all came and everybody just started singing and then someone made like a hook, like it was like a little like scooby da scooby da hey, so like. 20 people are in the room screaming that and there's class and chess session. So like teachers and students come out and they start coming into the, into the studio. And at this point, it's like a small studio. It has to be like nine by nine. Like, what do you think those little post-productions are like? They're not really big. They're like nine by nine or something. They're tiny. They're not that big. Like not, especially not for like 60 people. Oh, my bad. Not 60. That's way too many, but there's at least a good 15, 20, 25 people like in in the uh, in this in the studio, I see I see Vic's camera got cut out, but he might he might have turned it off or something for right now. Yeah, those those post production rooms get how like four people in there. It's yeah. like a desk and like a few spots for sitting. But other than that, it's not deep. Yeah, you could literally fit like four people, and at that at that point, you're already kind of like sweating. You're like you don't want people in there. So the door is open. Like 20, 25 people are just inside and outside. There's like more people outside this. There's also people outside the studio. And everybody's just screaming like this hook, like that. There's not even a hook. It's like a scooby dee da, scooby dee da. Hey. Anyways, no. Everybody was so hyped to rap on that. What's yeah, up? When, I was in the studio next door, and everyone ran out of my studio to go into your studio. Like the whole school, it was like a big, it was a big, big ass deal. Yeah, there's like there's a few videos of it, and it was like like when I heard and when I saw everybody like jumping around, it made me feel like proud. That like, damn, I had a beat that like could create this energy, you know? So like made me feel good for like a beat that's like two years old. Um, so everybody like was so hyped on the, like everybody singing like a the little rhythm together. And then at the end of it, it flopped. Like no one recorded anything. One person recorded it and that was it. Like the whole thing. And it never came out. I want to call it a flop. Okay. I, I meant like it was a flop as in like, it didn't even. That one just didn't come out. But like, that just means that those people will, Lost out on using your beat, so you could just send it to someone else. I wouldn't call it a flop, though. That's far from what it is. Yeah, I wouldn't either. But it should have. It either should have just got recorded live, and they could have had more footage of it. They should have captured it better, or I don't. I don't know. You know, that's just stuff that happens. That's just like, that's just the way it went. I don't know. There's nothing else. Yeah, but, we're gonna talk. But, about 
they're going to talk about bad stuff though, right? Because then I feel bad talking about something bad. I can talk about something good. I well, like I'm, I, I don't know what you're going to see what I'm going to talk about. All right, okay. All right, this isn't, I mean, it, but the end, to end it off, it wasn't bad. It's just like, it was unfortunate that it didn't get recorded on. Uh, but what was sick is that um, I didn't come up with this idea, but Mars, this artist we work with, he was in the studio and he recorded it off his phone, which is right there. Oh, shout out, Mars. Way right there, down there somewhere. He actually recorded it on his phone, like, like just screen, like from um, iPhone, like the voice memos. He just recorded it. So what I did is I, I synced it up so it's on beat with them live, but also the real beat. And I synced it up. So like now it sounds sick. Like I just have my own version of my own rendition of the live version over my beat, which, and it sounds fire. It's just like a memory thing. Like I'll always have that. But I guess that's my only thing is like, I wish that song actually came out and came to fruition. But I mean, it is, it wasn't a flop. I shouldn't have said that. You're right. It's like, it was a sick experience for me to like, to feel that. So that's what it all meant to me. So it wasn't bad. It wasn't the best thing that could have happened, but it was like just something that kind of, I guess, was unfortunate. I don't know. But that was it for me. Who's up? Me or Jordan? Gofu. Esteban, when you point on my screen, you're pointing like to my speaker. Yeah, you're pointing to my speaker as well. You're pointing on my screen, you're pointing to, yeah, nothing. <laughs> Well, sorry for everybody that's watching this, and I just confused all of you. I'm so sorry. No, on, on yours, it's going to look right. On oh, yours, yeah, no, you're, if, if they're seeing my screen, we're good. No, just right. edit subscribe links everywhere you point. That way it makes sense. That's no, good. All right, Eli, it's you. Oh, so sick. Holy shit, that'd be sick. Um, what does it have to be uh, the hard one or like the favorite? Just anything? I would just, Most I would interesting. Yeah, interesting, interesting. I've had a lot of good ones. Um, I think I might have talked about this before, but um, some of the earlier um, sessions I had with this one artist I work with a lot, like the most out of anyone, um, we, for like a week or two, I think we had a week or two off school because we only had two-week breaks during all all our semesters. Um, I would wake up at like 8 o'clock and go get like two the yerbas shout out to yerba and go get two yerbas and go to his house and work from like nine in the morning until we got kicked out by his mom at like you know 10 at night and that was like the beginning of like understanding mixing for me a lot or like recording and mixing um especially with autotune and trying to mess with you know like creating your own stuff i guess because we were using a lot of stock stuff and I only had so many plugins. I think I just bought like a bundle off waves, like the gold bundle or something or a Renaissance bundle. And, um, that's all I had. And those sessions I think helped like a lot. Cause then by the time that I actually met people at the school and people were starting to like, we were clicking up. Um, we had already clicked up a bit, but we started clicking up more. And then we started clicking with people like, you know, I'm not going to name names, but you know, different people. Um, because we're not trying to name names on here, but uh, they know who they are. Shout out to everybody. But uh, yeah, at that point, I already had like a little bit of uh, understanding for it and it was easy to kind of talk about it. So those sessions were helpful. Um, sessions with a lot of people were helpful because then you get kind of an idea on like how to work a room as an engineer. It's kind of hard sometimes. If you're a producer, sometimes it's a little bit easier because maybe you just have to do the beat or like maybe you don't have to worry. Like people might just be fucking around, but you don't have to like care about them. But if you're working in a room where people are recording inside of like those little suites or, you know, if, uh, you know, something's wrong with like the line, the mic lines and you have to pull the mic into the like control room and work on it. Like I've had people in the room that just don't understand, like you can't make any noise. Like the mic will pick it up and, uh, those can be hard so those will be the hard sessions but you get good at them and some you know you get it just telling people like what's going on what they have to do um like i said work in the room so i think the big sessions and then like the sessions that are like extensive like you know six eight hours 12 hours 14 hours whatever it is those are like the ones that i probably had the best learning experience from um i don't know if i've had any funny sessions I'm trying to think i guess like the homie sessions have been funny with uh I never had a session where like something 
uncontrollable will happen or something maybe of other people you're recording has happened and like you're kind of like the mate mediator <laughs> Yo, i know you have god damn it. i know you actually have. have had a couple kind of crazy sessions i'm not gonna i don't want to even touch base on that until way down the line but i have had a couple crazy sessions where i had to just like kind of sit there and not really mediated but just be like all right let's get back to like work like let's get what we're here for because we only have you know limited time we have the studio booked um i feel like that's a big thing though like when we're, as the engineer we always gotta like control yeah that's, that's, what, that's your one of your job like you gotta yeah. control and make sure everybody's like focused like everyone has to have a good time but like you be focused because then you can easily get carried away into like just it being a good time and then the song slips away. And- well, one one thing, all right, just to touch base on that because um, this actually ties in to what we're talking about. Here, here I'll, I'll explain it. The, one of the sessions that I was having not trouble with, but it was getting kind of crazy in the, in the room, in the live room. Um, when the session ended, I had just, for the first time, it was the first time I'd ever met this person. Um, I'm gonna shout, out, I'm gonna drop a name, but shout out Sky, Sky Two Wise, shout out the, shout out the boss right there. Um, she had that was the first session I had really worked, not worked with her, but she had came back in and popped in and like you know helped out a little bit. And at the end, we had like a crazy long talk, and um, she was like, you know, you guys could have got a lot more done. And I was like, well, we knocked out like two songs or like, you know, two or three songs. Like, what do you mean? She was like, well, you were talking to him the whole time. Like while he was recording, like every time you do a take, like, oh, you guys would talk about some of this. So you should have just kept going. Like, and when he was trying to talk about, you know, whatever was going on, you should have said, okay. And just pressed it again, record. And so that was the first time I was like, oh man, like, you know, even though you're the engineer and you feel like you are like working the whole time, like, oh, you're recording, you're doing this sometimes you can even be slacking off too. And I was like, that's when I realized I was like, okay, like, you know, you got to learn how to work a session. So that was, that was one where it was hard and it was like a learning experience. It was a really good learning experience, but shout out Sky, shout out Sky, shout out, shout out Fresh, shout out Levels 13. Uh, everybody over there doing their thing. Yo, the J-Dog? I know the J-Dog oh, is sessions. What up? Uh, I don't have too many stories because I don't record people. I just show up and make bees or show bees. Yo, play that, bees. that was sick. Yeah. That, yeah. that was a bar. So, uh, sound bite that? I'm going to add that. That's going to be my tag from now on. I don't engineer. I just show up and play shit. But anyway. Um, I don't have a job. I just get paid to vibe. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Keep a bottle of crystal next to me. Oh, you know the vibes. Yeah, I got damn it. My bottle of Remy's empty right now. But uh all right. Um yeah, I don't have too many interesting stories, but I do have a couple where I was like in a session playing beats and things were like <laughs> things were either like kind of weird or kind of funny, depending on how you look at it. But I know I'm gonna share two because they're both like really short. Um one of them was when I was with the homie, the homie Mars out here, and uh, we were like we were in a in a pretty big session. I'd say there was like ten other people in there, and um, and I had like been working with Mars, so like you know like we're kind of close. Like I like I know what kind of beats he likes, or like I know that he likes most of my my tracks, so I don't really have to like worry about like oh he's looking for this or like that i just kind of like play my stuff and he seems to like enjoy most of it and we just like vibe out and whatever comes from that comes from that so we were like in the studio session with like 10 other people and i'm playing beats and uh i think mars was gonna be on like one of the songs or whatever and i won't name this guy's name but he came in and he was like he was like yo like like don't don't be playing none of that stuff like play play this this is what he likes like this is what he's good on and stuff like this and i'm just like sitting there and i'm like wow okay like and i just listened to him like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say nothing you know i'm gonna like be professional about it and so i just listen wait wait you were playing for beats for mars and someone else and this person was like don't play those beats he doesn't like those yeah yeah he was like um 
Because I think it was going to be Mars and then some, like two other people in the song or like one other person on the song. And so I was just playing my beats and he, and he was like, nah, like play, play some stuff more like this. Like I can't really see him like on this. And I'm like thinking in my head, like, yo, it's not really up to you. I don't know who you are. Like, this is just like some other random producer. And like, I don't even like know the people I, I don't like when we show up to these sessions, like I show up with them. So like they know most of these people beforehand. So like I really don't know anybody unless I met them through them. So I just pull up this random dude comes up to me. He's like, yo, the beat, the, these beats aren't it. Like play something more like this. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm just like kind of being entertained. So I just keep playing more beats. Like I like listening to my own stuff. So I'm going to just keep going down the line. And, uh, and then, yeah, he's like, he's like talking like, and he's like trying to like get Mars like in the booth already, even though that's like not how he works, like not letting him like write first or anything. It was just a really weird vibe. And I think that's like a, like a learning situation that like I've seen is just like know how to act when you're in a studio. Like like music is subjective, you know, and even if you see something like uh, like I can't really hear this person on it, like no one cares about your opinion like at all. Like no one asks unless the artists themselves ask you personally, Hey, you know, like what kind of vibe do you think I'd be good on? But th those are very rare chances. So it's I said, just like something like that, where it's like, you're invited to play beats. It's like, you're, you should play everything. Cause it's like, you never know when someone's going to want to hop on a beat or like what type of beat someone's going to want to hop on. So it's like, you should always play all your beats, different styles, because that's also like how people open the doors. And if, that does sound pretty fucking annoying. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah. just facts. Like that's how artists level up. It's they're like, you know, they're just like, okay, don't send me something that, you know, you could hear me on. Just send me something new. Send me something that maybe you could hear someone else on, or just like a different vibe. And like, so really, it's like. It's, I don't know, it's all subjective. And so don't be that guy in the studio where you think you know everything and like you think you're like, your ear is just on genius level and you know what sounds good and what's going to make a hit and like everything. Just know your place when you're in a studio. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's one of my stories. And then the other one was actually with Estevan during this whole Project 96 thing, but I ain't going to name names. And I was playing beats and it took a while for this artist to to like a beat, which I don't blame them. You know, it's not for everyone. So it's like, like we just said, music is subjective. So I was playing beats and he was like, nah, I can't really feel myself on this. So I was like, all right. And I'm gonna keep playing beats. And then I played one and he was like really vibing to it. Like he was like, okay. And he was like rapping to himself. He was writing stuff down and yeah, it was like, it was all going good. And then I went, because Estevan was one of the engineers during Project 96. I, everyone was, everyone but me in this call was an engineer during Project 96. And so Estevan was closest to me at the time, uh, like room wise. And uh, so I was just like, yeah, like, um, all right, let's make this happen. Like uh, I sent him over to Estevan. He got the beat. And then I was in the studio for a bit and I was like, all right, like I need to go use the restroom or like check in with someone else. Cause I'm trying to get my beats heard like everywhere. So, uh, like I left and then like Esteban was telling me like immediately when I left the studio, he was like, all right, I'm not really fucking with these vibes, those beat. And then like got his own shit out. Like already had something like preset, like to record and everything. So like he was pretty much just like, like leading me on a string, you know, like not really from what I got from that is like he, he just like didn't care about the beat at all. And he just wanted to like get on. So I guess that's kind of like a smooth transition, but yeah, it was just kind of funny to me, like, how, how I played this many beats, and he said, like, he really messed with it, and then just completely changed it when he got in the booth, but I'm sure I'll see more of that in the future, like, you know, I think all of us have barely, like, are barely at the tip of the iceberg for what we're about to do in our careers, you know, so, and, and that includes, like, these stories, it's like, we'll have a lot more, ask us, you know, even six months to a year from now, we'll have, like, a lot more stories, Yeah. But, we, I, I also want to say, like, these are just a few stories. We have a lot of stories, but we do have a lot of stories about, I mean, we've already all mentioned a few times this Project 96 thing. Like, for everyone listening, we're going to have a whole other episode, maybe even two episodes, just on the whole Project 96 thing, because 
it's a big deal. It was a big deal, like in where, like our area and our school, and like just in general for something like that to happen. How it came together is pretty. It's pretty sick. Like we'll talk about it because it's cool stuff. So that'll be like in a further episode. Yeah, that'll be another episode. But to touch on what Jordan was saying about that guy, um, and if, and I know you guys are both wondering who it is, but Eli, it's a I'm young and I'm gigging. That's who it is. And um, <clears throat> do I know him? Yes, yeah, so you guys. All of you guys know him. I know him. Yeah. Well, I know him, but you know who I'm talking about. Anyways, to move on from that. Let's go. Um, what I was going to say about Jordan is that, like, funny story is, like, as soon as Jordan played that beat, I was in the studio when he played the beat. As soon as Jordan pressed play on the beat, he was like, oh, yep, I'm going to kill this. I'm going to rip this up. He said something like that. And he's like, yep, I started writing the lyrics. And as soon as we get into the booth, he's like, I was like, all right, you know, so, like, do you want to, like, take, I always ask, like, do you want to do, like, a test run first? You know, like, make sure he's comfortable. He's like, yeah. So as I do the test run, he's like, he doesn't even know what to say. And he was supposedly writing down lyrics. So, like, I don't know if he was, like, just lying to us to our face or whatever, but he was like, uh, like he was just kind of mumbling what he wanted to say but he didn't have anything written but he's like yeah I'm ready I'm ready and then I was like alright so then Jordan leaves to like what he said like check in with someone else to try to play beats and then that guy it's only me and him in the studio and he's in the booth and he's like alright run it from the top and I start I play it again and then he like raps like maybe like one line and then he could never finish it after that and he's like honestly bro I can't fuck with this beat no more it's not really for me no more I was like all right, I mean, it's good. I mean, I'm not going to force you to rap on it. Like, and I was like, I asked him, do you want to rap on something else? Like, just to, because like, I was free that time. So I was like, you, we could just, I could record something else for you if you want. He's like, yeah, you know what? I'm working on this EP. Can we just record on this? And I was like, yeah. So then that's. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I know you're talking about now. But uh, yeah, that was, that was that, uh, that session with Jordan. Um, but for me, I think that was, I mean, I, all my other sessions have been pretty chill. Um, well, I want to I touch on one thing Jordan said too about that. Cause like, I feel like this is how I, this is how I feel. And I feel like we all kind of feel like this too. Is like as like a producer, like like everyone knows maybe this specific person has good beats, but you don't have to like every single beat. It doesn't mean that the beat's not good. It's just not for you. But like someone, it's just it's just not for you. But like you don't have to fake liking the beat or fake wanting to use a beat or like always asking for a beat. Like you know, it's like it helps when it's organic, but if you're always like asking for beats, if you're always asking for beats and then like, you don't get a response when you get the beats sent to you or like, you know, they're like, Oh, these are fire. And then like, no one uses them. It's like, you know, it's cool that you're like giving, like you're, you're like, you're saying it's cool. It makes us feel good. But like, what would be better is like you saying like, yo, I listen to these beats. And, like, I like this one. Or like, yo, I listen to the beats or just acknowledging that you got them. It means a lot. Cause like, especially when you get them for free. Cause like, we can, we all do sell beats too. It's like when you get them for free, at least acknowledge or like give feedback or like say like they're not for you. So we can like send you the right stuff. You don't, our artists don't always have to fake liking a beat like that scenario what you're saying. Cause like we all know Jordan makes really good beats, but like it's not going to hurt his feelings. If you're not feeling a beat, I know he's not going to get his feelings hurt. So it's like, it's good to be real with the, with the producer and like that helps us grow and helps us like, learn like what what people don't like from me and like just stuff like that you know all right i i think that to add one more thing i think if we all go around just say one thing that we can give either a producer engineer or artist give them a tip like for the for being in the studio like jordan's I, like what i think was really good that jordan said is like i'm gonna say this one but another one but what jordan was saying is like know your place in the studio do a good tip and a bad tip like what they should and shouldn't do yeah all right. I mean, yeah. I, guess. I was like, I was like, what's a bad tip? It's like, just tell them some shit not to do. Be like, yo, yo, <laughs> yo. <laughs> put, your, put your coffee right on the board. I didn't mean tip, but you know, you know your drink right on the board. I got it. All right. So I think a good tip, obviously, what Jordan said, know your place. I, either if you're an engineer, producer, artist, whatever, that's a good one. Basic. But I think a good one for engineer, that's a good tip. I've said in like a f- episode, maybe the first or second episode, I said this. But I still think it's good. as like, m- have a good communication. Like, like, don't just make it about, when you first meet them, don't be like, oh, what's up? Let's go record. Be like, yo, like, what's up? Like, make a little bit of com- like communication, like talk a little bit, like build a little bit of rapport, you know, like some type of re- like a little bit of relationship. You saw that? I know. I think I just heard that on a, on a video today. That's why I just said it. Um, but 
like build build like like a like just a, a rapport with one another. Ah, I'm not even gonna say that word ever again. But just build up like some type of little like conversation. You know, don't just make it about straight music because then like you're not gonna like you're not going to love what you're doing. You know, you gotta, you gotta feel like it's, there's a connection between the two. Like that's the, that's how you get a, Make them make their best performance by them being comfortable in your, in your, in your session. I think that's the best tip I have a, a tip or a thing you shouldn't do. Like Vic was saying is like a tip that a bad tip is uh don't man. There's, there's a few that come to my head. I, uh, I guess one of my pet peeves, which is, I guess, is like, don't be, I guess, for artists is like, I don't know, there's a lot, but I hate when artists start saying like, and don't get me wrong, I, I, I know they're trying to like, oh, it's my sound. Like, don't, don't tell me, yo, I think he uses an EQ or a compressor or something. I'm like, I, I'm just like, dude, like, I understand you're like, and, and then they always say like, yo, this is my sound. I think he uses a compressor on this. Yeah, my, my engineer puts a compressor on or like something like, I'm just like, dude, like I get it. I get you. Like you're trying to like, un, like help me out, you know, like I try to put something on there, but it's like, you know, there's always a process that like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just basic knowledge, but I know the artist is trying to help you out at the end. So like, I don't want to, I don't want to like tell them and then feel bad about it, but that's just one of my pet peeves. Don't tell the engineer. Don't get me wrong. Like if you have your own auto tune settings, you know, and you really like that, let them know. So if you can, uh, you know, get your sound, but don't say like, you know, he used the EQ on me or something. And I'm just like, all right, just stop. I can't, I, I, I don't want to like hear anything, any tips from you. Uh, so I don't know. That's just one of mine. So that's it. Eli, go ahead. Yo, um, Good tip, man. Damn, I was just listening to his tips. I was the whole time I wasn't even thinking of any. Um, uh, shit, yo, Jordan, go first. Let me let me think of some tips. Let me think of some tips. Jordan's looking up tips right now on Google. Jordan's like, "What are good tips?" On Reddit, actually. Um, fuck. Okay. Uh, a good tip. Is this in the studio or in music? Were you listen? It's in the studio. One I wasn't listening, tip. actually. And one bad tip. It's not a tip. One, one bad thing to do in the studio. A tip in the studio. Um, Pers- you can even say personal. You're a producer. It's like on the producer side. Okay. Um, don't fuck up the vibes. Stop. That's all you really need to know. That and uh, on the producing side, hmm. I guess just like if you're if you're showing beats, like listen to them. You know, don't just like. I can't say don't either because it might, on the off chance, work. But if they're asking you for like a type of beat to play, and you don't have it. Just say you don't have it. Just don't look like an idiot and play like whatever your next beat is and be totally off from what they wanted. Like, you know, or at least divert it and be like, you know, like actually like I haven't, I don't think I have any, any beats that I made like this and then try and connect it to something else or, or something like that. I, I really don't have too many in the producing side because, you know, also like, Okay, I guess I guess here's one. Like, don't just like come at people and start playing beats. Like, if no one wanted, like, if no one asked to hear your beats, you know, like in a professional setting. Obviously, you know, if like you have a friend who's an artist, like y'all probably do that all the time. But like, if you're going into a professional setting and it's an artist you haven't worked with or barely have worked with, and you haven't, you don't have that personal ca- connection with them. It's just there to like make music and do business and out. Then don't play stuff unless you're asked, like they're asking you to play stuff, you know, don't just like hop on and try and like, like, you know, ignore the engineer and like, you know, put the aux in and just like start playing random stuff, trying to get a placement with the artist or something. Like just, just don't be weird. Like, I don't know. Just don't, just don't be weird. Like be yourself. 
Um, and then I think that was a, I feel like that covered the do's and don'ts. I don't know. Just be yourself and make good music and play good music. Actually, that actually helped me because what I was thinking, uh, this could kind of tie into the episode as well. Um, what what Trunks was saying about um, like having good communication and not just going right to the music. One of the times I actually did kind of have a weird session was when um, my artist pulled up and we went right to the music. It was like, yo, what's up? What's good? My name is this, whatever. And then it was like, what beat, what beat are you using? And he was like, boom. And then it was like, like we just started and then we kind of like talked a little and then we did it. And I, you know, like when, when we would be in those rooms, we would have a big TV and I would always throw on like a movie or throw on like a, you know, like, like a football game or, you know, whatever, whatever they wanted to watch. Um, so that's like, I think that's good stuff to do. Like find like common ground because sometimes you're not going to be the same type of person as the artist you're working with. You know what I mean? Sometimes you work with people who are like, just out there like Vic has some pretty interesting people he's worked with and like <laughs> you know sometimes you got to deal with that um try to find common ground you'll find you know if you work with people that you know you're that are from your area you're gonna probably have something in common and that's what I've found with a lot of people that I've worked with is like just being from around here and knowing like oh yeah bro I've been to this restaurant or, or, or you know bro everyone be everyone likes food talk about food you know talk about like shows talk about Oh, you ever seen this movie, bro? You seen? Oh, what do you listen to? Like, you know, it can't just be like, oh, your music. You know, you can't just sit there and talk about this all the time. Um, and that's the same thing that happens with us. We don't just sit around. We don't just sit around and make music. You know, like twenty four. I mean, Jordan does because Jordan's a robot. But like, uh, you know, you gotta just do some stuff. Three beats today. Come on, three beats and zero wins on Warzone. <laughs> Yo, what is Warzone? Yo, add us at the rough mix on Warzone. Yo, yo, I'll have that count. Yo, all wins. <laughs> oh, yo. what I was say is um, also what um, what um, Eli was saying about like talking, uh, like literally just start small. If you never, if you've never met them in your life, and like you just hit it, like somehow like you get connected through a friend or something, you don't really know him. Just do small talk, like. Oh, like, you know, like, how was the drive up here when you first meet? Like, you know, just talk, like, you literally just, like, make some type of little small talk up. I was going to use the R word, you know, but I don't want to bring it up again. Rapport. I said it again. But, I, but like, just literally just talk a little bit, and I guarantee you, your nerves of, like, recording your nerves of bad words that start with R. When you said the R word. No. Never mind. Sorry. I just. Stop. <laughs> All right, but like just just start like a little bit of a small talk, you know, like get comfortable with like the person being there, you know, like how their tendencies are. Like a lot of people come off aggressive, a lot of people come off like friendly, like you know, like a lot, just get to know them a bit a bit at first. So that way when you're recording, you could be like, "Oh, yep, yeah, that one was bad. Let's do it again." You know, like just nor- like that's normal, but to some people you might be like, "Oh, they think I suck." Like I now I'm like, I can't I can't even record anymore because I just feel like I'm terrible now. Or like some people are like a different, they're like aggressive. They're like, yo, what the, what do you mean? I like that take. No, 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 But like, and then, and then you feel like a certain way. So just learn how they are. And then you'll, you'll know like how to manage the situation when you're, when you're recording. I think that's a good, another tip. I don't know. What are you, Vic, have you gone? I have not gone. I'm going to go, go ahead. Go ahead, Vic. All right. So I'm just going to like play on to what you guys are saying. And then I'm going to say my two. So just from what Eli was saying, the whole music thing, like how they talk about music, that's like a, that's a big one. Cause like, all right. So like me personally, I'm not so big on talking. Like just, just personally, like I'm not into like having like these big ass conversations and then like doing a song unless like you're like a homie, like, and I know you for a long time then yeah, but like, I'm not into like all that, like having like fake talk or like just, I don't know. And there's a lot of that. It happens. There's a lot of that. I'm not into that. But, you know, I know they're just trying not to be awkward. But when it's, like, about real stuff, I mean, you're coming to record, talk about, like, relevant stuff to recording. You know, don't ask me, like, some, I don't know. There's, there's like, a lot of stuff like that. But, like, Eli's thing, like, that's a big thing. Like, if you learn what the artists, like, what type of music they listen to, what type of music they like, like, that's a huge thing you can learn. Like, 
when, when I went to a, an, uh, an internship, like interview thing, like the guy who owned the studio, like that was like the first thing he asked me, like my five albums, five favorite songs and like five movies. And like, you know, that was the first question. And then when the artists came, that was their first question to me too. Like they didn't like, they didn't plan that. I know for sure they didn't plan that. So it's like, it's a, that's a big thing. Like we learned what we all like so we can like see if we can work with each other. Cause it's like, if someone's all into, you know, I'm just going to do a comparison. If someone's into apples and another person's into oranges, you know, you, you can't, you can't, you, you know, they're not going to be similar. So, but if someone's into like oranges and apples and this guy's into bananas and apples, you still got that one thing that's similar. It makes sense. If you like think about what I'm saying, it makes sense. Oh, but, did you, did Jake just into the chat? <laughs> But, um, so yeah. And then like, uh, for like a, a bad thing I would say is, uh, oh, I'm also going to add on to what Esmo was saying. How you were saying like an engineer, like saying like, or like you're engineering, like the artist is like, yo, like you got to add an EQ. Like that's my sound. It's like, if you don't really know what you're asking to add, it's like, don't ask. It's like, you do it yourself. If that's the case. You're coming to us so you, we can give our sound. Of course, if you have a very unique sound, like the fundamentals of something, but if it's a fundamental, you'll know what it is. And you tell us what it is. If you don't know what it is, it's not important. Don't tell us. Let us do our thing. I've been in a session where the guy's like, yo, uh, it just doesn't, I just don't sound right. Like, I need a compressor. It's like, I got two fucking compressors on you already. It's like, you know, it, it's all in the art. It's like, you, we don't make your voice sound good. We enhance it. We add stuff. You know, uh, I don't know. Maybe you need to mix it a little better. It's like food. It's like food. Salt isn't going to make your food taste good. But if you add some salt, it makes, it adds flavor. It, it's just that shine. Yo, there has never been one episode in my <laughs> it, It's the best way I can. Wait, listen, listen. There's never been one episode where Vic has not made at least one analogy. He it's is so bad. <laughs> He really is the father of the rough mix. Yeah, it's it's how I explain. It's how I it's how I can make it make sense. And then my my personal bad tip or pet peeve is like when, when you're going in the studio, be like be somewhat ready or have somewhat of an idea of what you're going in there for. So that way you can actually like get some work done and like really, really get stuff done. Like it's kind of annoying when like you bring someone over. Like, if you know they're going to listen to beats, it's cool. If you just, you're like, you know, you're going to play some beats, just hang out and vibe out with them and like stuff. That's cool. But if you're doing that for hours and then like you don't end up making a song or even start a song or they come over, they have no idea what they want to do. And then you're just kind of like wasting time. It's like, you know, that's not, it's just a bad, it's a bad rep to have. And like, also like communicating like on sessions, like if you plan a session, like, you know, you, you have to, it's, it's something important, serious. Especially if you're an artist, you want to take it serious. You can't just like flake out. You don't miss work, right? So it's like it's the same thing. And like if you flake on a session, like from me or like anybody, just in general, it's like it's a bad, it's a bad reputation. You don't want to like I'm, I'm not going to take them as serious. And like it has happened before many times. It's like especially for us, like we we do a lot of this stuff for free out of our house, out of school. Like we have like you know we're lucky. We have school. We got a lot of stuff. And we we're trying to use it for like the best. And like when people like take it, it seems like they're taking advantage of not taking it serious enough. It's like, don't waste it. Not for us because we're, we're all trying to elevate. It's like, you can't be held down by people. Love, fool. Nick has no love in his heart. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but to be what, like to add on to what Vic was saying to finish off is like, a lot of people don't take it serious in music and all four of us are like from what I've been like since me coming up in music and like not coming up in music, like as I was born into this, but since I started music, uh, like these are the most serious guys I've ever been around with. So I know like about music. So I know that when we're in a session, you know, I mean, unless it's like with the, with the friends, uh, the friends, I sound like I'm white with the homies, like in, <laughs> When I'm, when I'm, when you know, when you're with the boys, you know, and you're recording a session, you know, if that's all fun and games, you know, like most of the time, at least, you know, don't get me wrong. There's, there's friends like me, 
we have a song called uh, Long Nights. Right now it hasn't been released, but there's a song that we all made. We're all on it. Jordan made the beat. And then, you know, uh, me, Eli, and Vic all have like a part of, as in the song. Like, they're, you know, anyways, there's a whole collab uh, little song we made. And uh, we took that serious. We first started messing around and then we took it serious because we realized like, damn, we could actually make a hit out of this song. And we all think it's a hit. Go ahead, Vic. I'm going to add on one thing. Like, this is, this is kind of relevant to what you're saying. If you're an engineer, you should start making songs. You don't ever have to release them or anything, but it helps you learn and experience. Like, when we do it, we do, like, the most random engineering stuff. And it's like, oh, sh- that actually sounds kind of good. Like, let's, that's, you know, that's a huge thing. Because, like, we're not all, none of us are rappers except for Eli, I would say. And maybe Jordan, you know, Jordan has two hits, all I'm saying. But, like, we all, like, make songs like that. And, like, we learn, you know, if we can make ourselves sound good, it's not rappers. We can learn, like, stuff like that. Like, that's a good thing. Especially as an engineer, because you're not engineering 24-7. If you are, you know, shout out to you. You know, that's good. But you're not all the time. And you have plenty of free time. And if you're an engineer, you have a mic, you know how to record. You know how to do everything. Just, Just try it and learn some stuff. That I think that's how you. I think that's the best way to experience. You don't got to worry if you honestly, if you're like a bedroom producer, and you want to learn how to engineer. You, there's like very affordable ways to, to like just start. Like this, I literally have this mic that, that's on Amazon for like a hundred dollars. You can get a cheaper mic. Just put it on your desk. You don't have to worry about this, the acoustics. Nothing. Just just literally record right here in front of you, and and that's it. And then you start engineering yourself. That's like the best way to start off. I think if you're like a, a beginner, just start off with yourself because a lot of people are like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to start engineering because I don't have anybody to record, you know, like do it on yourself. you never have to release the songs ever in your life. But if you start to engineer uh, by on yourself, you have a voice, you have a beat. If you make beats, you already got it. Like, that's how you start. Like that's, that's an easy way to just start like engineering or producing whatever you want to do. Um, that's a good thing from Vic. But I think to to end this end this all off, I wanna I wanna say, um, uh, I miss the boys. You know, we're all we're all in quarantine right now. Me and Jordan see each other every day, but um, you know, thankfully at least I get to see one of my boys. But I don't see Vic or Eli like at all. I only see them. This is the only time we ever get like face time to do, talk to each other, all of us together. So um, I want to say I miss you guys. Um, I'm not going to tear up on on the camera. I'll wait till after the, after we're done. But no, um I think like for me, for some reason I'm really motivated right now. So like I want to I want to even do another podcast after this, but we'll we'll talk about that. But no, it's good. Eli. don't worry about it. It's good. Don't worry about it. But what I was going to say is that um we're all like really very serious about music and we really want to do make this into a career. So I think for those people out there listening to this and like if you're really serious about about making doing music and either whether it's being an engine anything any role you want to play in music take it serious and study and grind because that's all the time you have right now especially during the quarantine but regardless even if there's no quarantine if you really want to be if you really want to do this in your life try your ass off like literally work at it work at it as like as as if it's your job like all of us have put in so much time for this and I feel like it's only going up from now. Well, from like a while ago, but it's always gone. It's since I met these guys, we've only gone up. Let me add one more thing too. Before we go, for engineer, this is this is like an engineer thing. This is like a huge thing. Learn like the words and the terminology, because if you can learn the words and like all like the the fundamentals, you can engineer on any doll or anything. It's 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 all the same. If you learn the words, then you can communicate with other engineers, because you know it's hard to explain stuff or it's hard to understand things. If you don't know the words as an engineer, I think if you're an engineer, you should definitely know the words like, you know, what a bus is and et cetera, stuff like that. Insert sense, all that stuff. It's a huge thing. Like when you're starting out, if you can learn that from the beginning, like that'll help so much. That's a very good tip, Vic, but uh, sorry about, I was just going off right now, speaking from the heart and I just got cut off. It's all right. Anyways, um, it's all right. We cut your mic like 20 minutes ago. I already cut it. Uh, so I think the best thing is love music. I know, look, Jordan doesn't make beats because he hates it. He makes it because he loves it. Eli doesn't make beats slash rap slash engineer because he just like wants to mess around. He takes it serious. 
when he's rapping, he may be, you know, joking and taking it like a joke. But when he's engineering and producing, I know he's taking it very serious. Look at the, look at the Cristal. It was shouts out to Crystal right there. The Cristal. You get the bottle on you? Oh, he really does. You're a beast. And I know I know Vic is serious because he's been doing this for a while. You know, he's he's the OG out of all of us. What are you coming on? 34 now? 35? I don't even know. Jesus Christ. Yo, people are gonna fucking believe you if you say that shit. Oh, I mean you kinda you kinda look like it. Yo, we're, no, we're, let, me, let me blend you up. I'm a DJ. They call me DJ Blends. What's up? Oh Jesus Christ. Anyways, all right, to end it off, to really end it off for real. Shout out Tito. Yo, shout out Tito for real. Shout out Ramirez, dog. Right here. Look at that. Great gods. Shout out. Anyways. Oh, the album comes out soon. All right, I'm not even talking about it. So let's, all right, just to end it off. Uh we uh all every everybody we're all in the rough mix. Everybody that's listening to this, we're a part of the rough mix. We're in it because we love music. We're in it because we love this craft. And I want I just I just want to like let people know that you have to love this to make it to make it a possible, to make it a dream. That's that's all I want to say. As always, it's been your boy Trunks, your boy Eli, Coach Cooper, Yo Vic. Uh, I had to say something. Go ahead. He said, yo, 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 he said my name. He said my name for me. I thought he was going to announce all of us. And then Jordan fucking, fucking Mike bombed us. Sorry. Say it, Eli. Say what? You said you're going to say something. It's good. We're out of here. Peace. Ah. Uh.